Okay, Jimmy, here's what we got going this morning. It's first light, it's overcast, perfect conditions for May on Lake Lanier. We're gonna be fishing for both Kentucky spots and we're gonna fish for stripers. This is top water season. The stripers are basically just coming down from their spawn where they spawned up river, even though they're not gonna, it's not gonna happen. I mean, they do spawn, they go, the they go through the motions, but they don't become fertile. And the spots are coming off the beds right now. So this is Todd, they're hungry, and they're gonna be feeding basically on these points. What we're looking for is designated points. And if you look right over there to, to our left, you'll see that reef marker, all right? That white reef marker is a great place for fish to hold up shallow. What they do is they come up out of the deep water, it's near the river channel, and they actually ambush the bait up on those points. Bait comes up on the and all we're gonna do is, up. that's right, we're just gonna hit point after point. It's just, it's a numbers game. The more points we can hit in the morning, the better chance we're gonna find fish. We may hit four or five points and not catch a thing, and then on the sixth point, we catch four fish. I mean, it's that kind of a deal right now. So we're gonna start over here, and we're gonna throw top water. You're gonna be using your flat thread. I'm gonna use the uh, the pole dancer, and we'll see what we can raise. And, you sound uh, a lot more exciting than I do. I'm I, a flat thread, and you're a pole dancer? Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> I, I, I get to play with the pole dancer. Hey, my whole life has been that way. I can handle it. I understand. Jim? I want you to make some casts up on this reef marker. There should be fish Tor toward the marker. Towards the marker. They're either going to be in front of it or just on the right side of it. And it won't take long for us to know whether these fish are here. And just keep that fly on top. I am sure they're going to be up on the rocks just behind that marker. But sometimes the stripers like to hang out in this little deeper channel. We're sitting in 31 feet of water right here. And how deep is that marker? There? That marker is probably six feet. I like the action of this fly. Yeah, that flat thread is one of Charlie Bisharat's new flies. It's a, uh, it's a popper that has a crease fly feel to it. Notice how it darts and yeah. spins. And... Yeah. Come on, baby. Somebody's got to be up top here. And that fly is just waking. See, notice how that pole dancer is going left, right, left, yeah. right. Just walking the dog. Just walking the dog. It's very rare that somebody comes up with something that becomes uh, legendary in its early time. And you don't have to do anything. There's no action that you need to impart on the rod. So, it so does it all on its own. They're not feeding here, Jimmy. Let's make a move. Let's go north. Now, Jimmy, that's a great lesson right there. Now, I know, Jimmy, most people would say that you're one of the best fishermen on this lake. Truth of the matter is right there, that is the best fisherman on the lake. That, that greater blue heron. He's at it 24-7, isn't he? 24-7, he's stealthy. And uh, when you get onto a point or a reef marker or someplace that you know is generally an area that should hold fish and bait, and you see a bird sitting on that point, you know there's fish there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna have you make some casts on the point first, and if not, we're gonna get on the drop on the back side. Okay. All right? There he is. There we you go. Got him. There you go, Jimmy. Good job. You got yeah. a spotty. Yeah, they're right where they're supposed to be on the right side. A little spotted bass. Good Flat job. Flat Fred. Flat Fred comes through. All right. So he's right on the drop off there. Right on the drop off. And look how he just, he's got that fly right in the, right in the front of his mouth. Mm -hmm. He's got that Flat Fred. And this is a spotted bass. Now, Jim, I'm gonna just give you a quick little bit of a lesson on these spotted bass and how you can tell the difference on the markings. Okay, you can see it has a bass marking like a largemouth mm -hmm. along the sides. Yeah. And it looks like a largemouth. But the difference is, if you, look at, if you look at where his mouth, his jawline is, the jawline in relationship to the eye. More like a small mouth. Like a small mouth, it's in front of his eye. Okay, you can see that jawline, a large mouth comes back here. Mm -hmm. That's why he's got that large mouth, where the spot is small. But, so these fish have a markings of, of, a, of a large mouth, but they really are much more aggressive and fight like a small mouth. And uh, let's let him go. Come on, fella. There he goes. They just attack with a vengeance, don't they? They are very aggressive. I think I'm going to switch over. I'm going to put something different on. I'm going to put on a pink 
wiggle minnow. Look at this fly on the surface. Look at it wiggling in the water. It looks a lot like the shad, doesn't it? It does. All it is, Jimmy, is a piece of foam that they put on a hook with a little piece of polar fiber. They actually cut the foam on a 45 degree angle. That's what allows that it when place. it hits the water and it just allows it to wiggle and it is just a hoot to fish. <laughs> and I fished this all over the country. I fished it up on uh, Cape Cod last year for stripers and in New England as far as and New York water. City saltwater. And the fish just love it when they're on small bait fish. Yeah. Up to about three, four inches. I just heard something. Come on, baby, eat it. Good job, Jimmy. Oh, he came off. No, he's just swimming. No, he did. He came off. <laughs> you know, it's just like, they're just excited to be there, aren't they? Just jumping and everything. When he comes up and eats it, you've got to let that fly go underneath the water. And set, in other words, you got to delay the hook set by about a split second. It's, it's just like dry fly fishing for trout. Exactly. You set the hook too soon, you pull. You the fly pull it out. away from them. There they are, Henry. Where you see them? Two cast lengths away. Oh yeah, I see. Yeah, let's make it. Let's go over there. There they are. To the, one o'clock, Henry. Oh, fish just blew up. Oh, another one blew up out in the middle. Look at him chasing that bait out there. That he's just following after. it. Look at the heron after. Yeah, he's gonna <laughs> land right on the water. Watch this. Look at that. I want it. Boom. <laughs> Now, what did he think he was going to do out there? Well, i tell you what he did do. He stopped. <laughs> oh, he's on it. I got him. There we go. He's about to jump. <laughs> oh, yeah. Chunky. Oh, there he goes, a jumper. Oh, easy little fella. All right, another little spotty. I don't want to hurt him, so let's grab the. Ooh, I got I got a surprise for you, Jimmy. Yeah. Yeah. I got a surprise for you when we get done with this fish. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> Here's what they're eating, Jimmy. They're eating a little thread fin shad. Looks like flat uh, thread to me. If you look on the screen, that dark cluttered mass, that's all bait fish, that's all thread fin shad, which are small, gizzard shad, which grow very big, and then we've got the blueback herring. There's the flat Fred, there's the spotty. Hold on, let me let me give him back his, his meal. <laughs> Sorry, pal. He took it. He didn't spit it back out. 